This led to the AAV-7, which features full armor protection and superior mobility in water and on land. With their many advantages over conventional landing craft, amphibious assault vehicles form the first wave of any contested beach assault. They are armored, so they protect their troops against machine gun and artillery fire. And their tracked suspension allows them to operate over reefs and other beach obstructions, which would stop other landing craft. The AAV-7 swimming ability comes from its boat-like hull and special water jet propulsion system. The water jets draw in water from above the track and expel it out the rear. They give the vehicle a speed of seven knots in the water. The special watertight hull allows it to operate in 10-foot swells. On shore, the amphibious assault vehicle serves as an armored troop carrier, able to transport 25 troops inland at speeds up to 45 miles per hour under armored protection. The AAV-7 can be armed with a 50 caliber machine gun or a Mark 19 40 millimeter machine gun. trend for the Marines to launch over the horizon attacks, the 20-ton AAV-7 is quite slow in the water. This dilemma is addressed with a radical design of the new Expeditionary Fighting Vehicle, or EFE. A careful study of ship dynamics revealed that a well-positioned bow plane at the front of the vehicle would cause it to rise out of the water as if it were on water skis. Skirts at the side of the vehicle can be lowered to cover the tracks, eliminating a major source of drag. And finally, by adding a powerful turbine engine, the EFE can achieve speeds of well over 30 knots. As quick as it may be in the water, its primary job remains to deliver the marine forces to the battlefield. Its hull must be spacious enough to carry a fully equipped marine combat unit to the beach and into battle. The EFV is expected to enter service in 2008, and with over 1,000 vehicles ordered by the Marines, it will provide the U.S. Marine Corps unparalleled amphibious assault capability. Since World War II, the U.S. Navy has developed a wide range of sophisticated warships specifically intended for amphibious operations. Among the largest and most capable of these are amphibious assault ships such as the Tarawa class USS Saipan. Saipan in an amphibious operation plays a very central role because she has most of the forces. We have all the uh, helicopters uh, and the Harriers and uh, we would have the greatest majority of the troops. And so the troops would go ashore by helicopter uh, from our deck or by boat uh, through our well deck. At first glance, ships like the Saipan resemble regular aircraft carriers, but there are substantial differences. The biggest difference between uh, the LHA and the, and the the regular aircraft carrier as we know it are the catapults and arresting gear. We don't have catapults and arresting gear. Uh, we cannot operate conventional uh, fixed-wing uh, aircraft. The Saipan carries aircraft that directly support marine operations. This includes transport helicopters and Harrier vertical takeoff jets. The Saipan is an amphibious assault ship, so the marine aircraft are aboard basically uh, to transport the Marines and to assault the beach. During an amphibious launch, we uh, have all the Marines lined up underneath the deck here. We move the aircraft on spot, they turn up once they're ready to go. We give the high sign, the people bring the troops on, they're loaded in the aircraft and they're gone in five minutes. As soon as they're leaving, the other people are already hooked up with tractors to the uh, second wave of aircraft 
and they're pulling them out. It's really fast pace. They come in, the aircraft come back and refuel. We refuel them in 10, 15 minutes, load more troops, and they're gone. But the Saipan and her sister ships of the Tarawa class are more than just many aircraft carriers. They have large well decks at the stern, allowing them to land and embark landing craft, which brings supplies and troops to the beach. Inside her cavernous hull are storage facilities for the supplies needed to conduct an amphibious landing. Supporting ships like the Saipan are the smaller amphibious transport docks, the LPDs and the dock landing ships like the LSD-37 Portland. The entire stern of the LSD is filled with a large well deck, which acts as a miniature harbor. We have uh, a well deck that is capable of ballasting down and bringing water into the well so we can bring assault boats uh, or landing craft uh, inside our well. So we can either be dry or wet, depending on what our mission is and what we're loading. This well deck is 422 feet long and 48 feet wide. In the case of the AAVs, we bring them all the way into a dry deck and, and position them uh, in the forward part of the ship uh, all the way back. For the Marine Corps, these amphibious assault ships offer valuable versatility demanded for complex amphibious operations. The Navy still uses landing craft to bring supplies ashore. The main innovation in transporting supplies is the LCAC for landing craft air cushion. The LCAC's propulsion system creates a pillow of air underneath the main platform. The air pillow is contained by special skirts around its edge. Forward propulsion comes from a pair of large propellers at the stern of the craft. Riding on a cushion of air, it is five times faster than a normal craft, capable of 50 miles an hour in calm seas. In addition, the LCAC can bring the supplies right onto the beach. The LCAC can carry over 60 tons of supplies. Its sophisticated controls are closer to that of a jet aircraft than a conventional ship. The LCAC can be used in conjunction with the Navy's amphibious warships. During long sea voyages, the LCACs are nestled inside the well docks of the mothership.